Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 8.2, adding and subtracting rational numbers. Let's first start with a little review on how to add fractions. Remember, we need the same common denominator. When we get the same common denominator, we are looking at least common multiple to make things easy for us. Least common multiple between a 3 and a 5 is a 15. So I, since I took the bottom times 5, I have to take the top times 5. Since I took this bottom times 3, I have to take the top times 3. So from this guy, I have... 10 fifteenths plus, now from this guy, I have 9 fifteenths. Once we have the same denominator, we can add across the top, so we have 19 over 15 for our answer. Now we are asked here to find the least common multiple of a set of polynomials. And when we first do that, let's go ahead and multiply everything out. So we have 3 times 5 times a times a times a b and then times 3 c's. Next, we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and then we have 5 b's that we have to multiply times each other, and then we have a couple c's there, and then finally for 20, we have 2 times 2 times 5, and then times a times a times a, and then we need 6 b's. And there's my six B's. Now, to find our least common multiple, we circle the numbers or the letters that occur the most often. So we have a three here that occurs just once, but it's the most often. And we have a five. So, so far, we have three times five times. How many twos occur the most? Well, here is four twos that occur the most. So it's going to be times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or if you wanted to, you could have had 16. Looking at A's, here we have 2, no A's there. Here we have 3 A's, so it's going to be times A to the third. How many B's do we have? Well, here's 5, and but here is 6, so we have times B to the six, and then C's, we have three of them there, so it's C to the Third. Now when we multiply this all together, it looks like 240 A cubed B to the sixth C to the third for the least common multiple of these polynomials. Let's try one with uh, minuses and pluses in between the terms. What can you take out of all these letters? I can take out an X, so then I will be left with X squared minus X minus 2. Now can I factor this? Yes, I can. I can factor that into x minus 2 and then x plus 1. How about this guy? What can I factor this into? How about just a x minus 2 and an x minus 2? Now we need everything that occurs the most. So we need that x. So it's going to be times x. Now we have 1 here, but we have 2 of these, so I need times x minus 2 and I need the other x minus 2 from right here and then finally x plus 1 and so now this would be your least common multiple from these two polynomials now you can leave it like this you do not need to continue just so you can see what factors are in there now let's jump to number three we're asked to simplify the expression when we're asked to simplify the expressions the first thing we have to start with is our common denominator well, I'm going to take both denominators over here for a second just to see what I need. So here I have 5 times a times a times a times b times b. Here I have 2 times 5 times a times b. Well, what do I need? My common denominator needs a 5, a 2, it needs 3 a's, and it needs 2b. So my common denominator, when I multiply it all together, is 2 times 5 times a cubed and times b squared. So we are looking to get to 10a cubed b squared. So starting with this guy, what do I have to take times this guy to get 10a cubed b squared? Well, I just have to take this guy times 2. And so what you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So here we have 8 over 10 a cubed b squared then 
I have to get this guy to the same thing. Well, I just need a 1. I'm not going to show it. And then we need an a squared, and we also need 1b. So what you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top, a squared, b. So now on top, I have a 9a squared, b, and also a c. That's going to go all over a 10a cubed, b squared. Now, ladies and gentlemen, since we have the same denominators, we can go ahead and add right across the top of the fraction. We come up with 9a squared, b, c, plus 8, and that's all going to go over the common denominator of 10a cubed, b squared. With 4, same situation, what's going to be our common denominator? Well, I know that the least common multiple between 6 and 14 is going to be 42, and then I have an a squared that I need and a b squared. So how do I get that 6 to be 42? I have to take that times 7. How about a's? It has no a, so I need an a squared, and I also need a b. What you do to the bottom? You have to do to the top. So it's times 7a squared b. Now on the other side, how do I get this guy to be 42? I have to take that times 3. Do I need any other a's or b's? I do not, so I just take the top times 3. So here I come up with 35a to the 4th b. And why is it a to the 4th? Because a squared times a squared is a to the 4th b. That all goes over. 42a squared b squared. Then we have a plus, and then here we have 27 over 42a squared b squared. Combine like terms, there are no like terms, so final answer is going to be 35a to the fourth b plus 27, and that's going to all go over 42 a squared b squared now we have some polynomials on bottom well let's go ahead and factor both of these here it's going to be three as when i take out a three it's going to be x minus five here if i take out a six it's going to be x minus five so notice how we have an x minus five and an x minus five which is good we need our common denominator by the looks of it to get x or to be six times x minus 5. So the I have my common denominator here, but I need to take this guy times 2. And when I take that guy times 2, I need to take this guy times 2. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do a special little thing here. Since I have the same common denominator, I'm just going to write it once. I'm just going to go 6 times x minus 5. And now, I'm going to put that under this 2, be very careful ladies and gentlemen, it has to go to the x and the 10. It has to go to the x and the 10, so I get 2x plus 20. And now with this minus sign, remember with polynomials we have to distribute that minus sign, so it's going to be minus 3x and then minus 15. We're going to combine all like terms to get what? Here and here to get a negative x plus 5 over a common denominator of 6x minus 5. Now look, we have a negative x, a positive x, and a minus 5. What can I take out of here? I'm going to take out a negative. When I take out that negative, it's going to be x minus 5. Look here, we have the same thing there and there, so we can cancel out because we are being multiplying. We're multiplying it to those numbers, so we are left with a negative 1 over 6 for our final simplified answer. Here, we have to do everybody's favorite F word. We have to factor first, so let's factor both of them first. This guy factors to y minus 7 and y plus 5. This guy factors to y plus 4 and y plus 5. We already have a y plus 5 right there and there. This guy what do I have here that I do not have here? I have a y plus 4, so this guy needs a y plus 4, top and on, bottom. Now what do I have here 
that I don't have here. I have a y minus 7. So I have to take this guy times y minus 7 and y minus 7. So on top, we have 6y because I have to distribute that 6 there and there plus 24 and then over here I have plus 4y minus 28. What's that all go over? Our common denominator which was all of this multiplied together and I'm just going to write it as factors to save us a little heart heartache from multiplying this all out. Now let's clean it up. We have 6y and 4y which is 10y minus 4 and that all goes over y minus 7, y plus 5, y plus 4. A couple more. With 7, now we have two fractions. What do we have to do? We have to get the same denominator on both fractions and then we can worry about what to do after that. So, what's going to be my common denominator here? It is actually going to be A times B is going to be my fraction. So, I'm, my common denominator is going to be A times B. How do I get this A to be B? I have to take it times B. So now I have B. And what do I have to take times this guy? I have to take this guy times A. So it's going to be A plus. Or B plus A. And that's going to go over the top of. Now we have to work on this guy. Remember, 1 goes over 1. What's my common denominator going to be? It's just going to be a B because when I multiply them together, it's just going to be a B. That guy needs a B. This guy is good, so it's just 1 minus B. Now what does this mean, right? A fraction bar means division. So we are now dividing by 1 minus B over B with these two guys, correct? Now, it's just time to go to work with it. What's or division mean? It means flip and multiply. So now it's B plus A over AB. And then we change it to multiplication and we flip the second fraction to be B over 1 minus B. We can cancel out kitty corner. Yes, yes we can. With those Bs, we can't cancel out that B with that B because of the addition and subtraction signs. So we are left with B plus A. That all goes over that A times 1 minus B. Now if you want to multiply that A through, you can. But I would just leave it like that for simplicity and see what we can cancel out. We cannot cancel out this A with that A because this A is being added to this B. This A is being multiplied. Since this A is being added, we cannot cancel out. One more time here. Let's find a common denominator on top and on bottom. So here, if I put this guy over 1, what's going to be my common denominator? It's just going to be an x when you multiply both denominators. So my denominator is an x. I'm just going to write one denominator. This guy was already good, so it's going to be 2 minus, I had to take that guy times x, so it's 2 minus x. That's going to go over the top of. Now, what is the bottom going to be? What is my denominator? Multiply them together, it's just going to be x, y. What did I take this y by to get x, y? I had to take it times x. So I take the top times x. So now I have an x. What did I have to take this x by to get x, y? I had to take it times y. So I take the top times y. So it's minus 3y. What's a division bar or a fraction bar tell us to do? We have to divide by the bottom fraction, so it's x minus 3y over xy. Division tells us to, uh, to flip and multiply, so it's 2 minus x over x, and now I am multiplying by the flipped, now notice that it's xy on top, that's over x minus 3y. What can we cancel out? We can cancel out those x's because they are being multiplied, so now on top it is 2 minus x times y, and that all goes over. What do we have on bottom? This is a 1, and now we just have this, so it's x minus 3y. There's nothing that we can factor out, top or bottom, so we leave it, and this is the final simplified answer of number 8. And that does it for section 8.2, adding and subtracting rational expressions. Good day.